please stand and join us for the first song? We're having a few technical difficulties. morning. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling to be back in church. So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for being who you are. You are God and we are not. And Lord, we thank you that you are in control of this storm and this virus that we're going through. And Lord, just we thank you for health. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your joy. In the middle of all of this, in the in and when things get very questionable and things go out of hand and Lord, we just thank you that in the midst of that, we can sing your praise because we know that you haven't lost control Lord, we thank you so much Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to meet in your house this morning. And Lord, I just, uh, I just want to give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. It's kind of nice to be able to see people and not preach to empty pews. And so, uh, but if you are going to keep updated, make sure that you look at our Facebook page and our website. We are going to have a weekly digital bulletin on there uh, on Mondays. By the end of Monday, 
So that way you can see all the uh, activities and uh, what was given and all of that. So, and also through this time, I want to thank every one of you for your faithful giving because it has helped us tremendously to stay above what our normally giving was. And so we was able to accomplish some of the stuff and updates of the church. Uh, and so just thank you so much for uh, pressing through this, staying faithful, and, uh, and all of you who have done the extra mile, be being the hands and feet of Jesus and giving to, of yourself, of your time and your finances to bless those and to deliver things and to send out encouragements and to stay encouraged. And so just thank you so much for that. And, uh, and so just a lot of things happening. We do have um, uh, our camp out at the end of the month. And so uh, just let us know. Let me know if you plan on coming. That way we ha know how much food to bring to our camp at the end of the month. So, uh, but let's all stand again. Let's worship. Let's get our worship on this morning. i 
What amazing grace that is. Praise the Lord, our chains are gone, amen. One thing that I do know through this whole time, I have experienced the shelter in the storm. And some of us, and we all are still going through, partly through this storm, and we never, we don't know when the storm is going to end. But God is our shelter. God, this did not surprise God. 
And when, when storms come our way, I don't know about you, but I, I tend to look at them. The other day I was driving down the road and I was actually heading from downtown to my house and I was in front of the storm. And the storm, I, I, I just, I don't know what it is, but I could be a, a, a tornado chaser. And, you know, my wife, and when, when we've experienced tornadoes, she has said, get down in the basement, you know, you're not dying tonight. And I'm sitting here like, but the cow just passed by, you know, and it's like, you don't see that every day. But, you know, in this, in this, so I was watching the storm, I was like, could that be a tornado? Could that be a tornado? And it was just kind of following me to my house. And I knew once I got to my house, I was able to get inside and be sheltered. And I knew there was no coming tornado, but it was just so cool. But I like staring at the storm. And the part that I'm trying to get across is the idea of our eyes in this whole storm that we're going through. It could be financial and definitely uh, the virus and, you know, it could be family. It could be relational. All of these things just compile in and our eyes turn to them. You know, our, that's our flesh default mode. It was, we, we turn to look at what's happening. The loudest cry. And one thing being uh, having foster kids and adoptive kids and bio kids is the fact that whoever screams the loudest probably gets the attention. And most time, that's Carrie. And, and we all God's people have said, you know, it is Carrie. But, you know, it's, but that's the thing in our lives. We will always tend to look at the loudest thing going on in our life. And it could be shouts of, of relation at relationship problems. It could be shouts of financial problems, job problems. It could be just shouts of, am I going to get sick? You know, and the fear that comes with that. And we tend, we will always have the tendency to look at those storms. You'll never get to the point where you're just completely staring at Jesus. And it's kind of like when people's like this and you just, their eyes are on and the storms, and you still live with your flesh as well as I do. And we tend to look at those no matter how close we are to God you know, imagine with me, Peter, being staring down Jesus, bid me to come upon the water. And he says, come. So it's like, okay. You know, and then all of a sudden, and I don't know about you, but I, anybody hear that thunder and lightning? See the lightning and hear the thunder the other night? It was the loudest. That everybody was texting me, did you hear that? And, you know, and that got my attention. That got all of our attentions. And, but imagine that happening, and you're on water, and you could drown. I don't know about you, but I don't like being in water that I can't touch the ground. I have reasons for that. But, you know, I, and, and Peter looked at it, which none of us would blame Peter, right? None of us would blame Peter for looking at the storm because of the situation he was in. But as soon as his eyes got off Jesus, he sunk. And so that's the thing. Some of us, we find ourselves sinking a lot every day. Peter loved Jesus. Peter was, had enough faith in Jesus to say, hey, if he says I can come, I'm going to come. And are we that close to Jesus? Where we will get out of the boat and start walking, doing the impossible. And then this idea of, hey, I, f I feel like I'm close to Jesus, but man, I struggle. Yeah, you will. Till the day you take your last breath, you will struggle with your flesh and looking at the storm. But here's the thing. That's why it's so important to find shelter in Jesus. Going to him in prayer. It's the same thing over and over again that we've got to learn how to make habits of doing these things and realize that you can fall at any moment. Because... It doesn't take a person who is walking with Jesus constantly that they're, they're beyond sin. No. You still live on this earth. You, will, you could fall into any sin. It, 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 just look at church leaders who have fallen, unfortunately. You know, you thought they were just so close to God, and then you, you found out that they were having an affair, or, you know, they did this and they did that, and then you're just kind of like, well, if he would fall, and this is the thing is, we're all equal in our flesh, amen? It's about daily praying, and don't say, well, I had my time with God, now it's my time to do whatever, because you're going to start walk, trying to walk on that water, and you're going to sink. It's keeping your focus on God and making God your shelter in the storm. Psalm 91, if you have your Bibles, 
Turn to Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Can you say that this morning? He is my refuge and He is my fortress. Humor me. Say it with me. He is my shelter. He is my fortress. That's who we run to. And it goes on. It says, my God, in him will I trust. When the world's telling you and when your humanly wisdom is telling you something different than what God's word's telling you, who are you going to trust? But if I, if, I, if I give or if I spend my time doing this, if I, if I do this, I'm not going to have a job promotion. Or if I do this, then it's like you just trust God in his ways. You will be blessed. And doesn't mean that you're going to be millionaire, but it means you'll be blessed because you're following his steps. And yes, that could mean something that you have to give up, but you are trusting God. In him will I trust. So there's seven things I want you to remember, and we'll go through these really quickly. But there's seven things I want you to remember. Number one, storms will come. Amen? (laughs) No matter how many sunny days that we experience, storms will come. What do we do in those storms? Isaiah 43, 2 says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Remember, Daniel faced the lions. And remember, Joseph was still thrown in prison. Job still lost all he held dear. The disciples still faced persecution, but being a believer doesn't mean that we will keep, that he is going to keep us from every hard circumstance, does it? Even though that's what we kind of expect. I don't know about you, I, I kind of expect, Lord, I'm doing this and this and this for you, so, you know, I, in return, you know, all this stuff should work out. No. If you're doing what's right, more than likely you're going to suffer more persecution. <laughs> you're going to suffer a lot more. But here's the thing, the suffering is different than when you're suffering, making wrong choices, and then suffering for Jesus. Because suffering for Jesus is is blows away. I mean, it's, it, you'll have that mindset, and I remember uh, Brother Daniel uh, emailed me, at, uh, I can't remember the whole story, but basically it was no matter what they were going through, I can't remember the story, but no matter what they were going through, hardship they were going through, they said, we're, we're not turning from Jesus. We're going to trust Jesus. We're going to still proclaim his name. They're not going to shut my mouth because I am still to live for Jesus no matter what. And that's the idea of when storms come, I'm still going to focus my eyes on Jesus. Because it's not if, it's when storms come. So number two, we should heed the warnings. Remember to heed the warnings. Ephesians 5.14 says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Anybody hear the 11 o'clock Friday tornado drill? Yeah. You can shake your head, wave your hand, because, you know, I'm not used to that. You hear that, that tornado, or when you hear it, and it's like, oh, it's not Friday at 11. You're kind of, uh uh-oh, what kind of storm is this? So you turn on the news and try to figure out if it's a tornado and what you should do. But if you're like me, you know, I hear that siren, I'm I'm going in the window like, (laughs) ha-ha. I go outside, like, where is it at? Where is it at? You know, and the thing is, you know, we should heed the warnings. I remember a a few, I think it was about a month ago, where we had our um, playhouse. It has been through, I think, three windstorms. Because I've had to pick it up three times and set it back up and fix it. But it's kind of neat to see how the, the destruction of the storm. But the thing is, when it comes to these warnings, we should heed the warnings. Because we don't know what the storm may bring. 
God reminds us in his word to stay aware. We've got to wake up. We've got to stay awake. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be sober, be vigilant. It doesn't say relax, kick up your feet. You know, stay a while, just kind of, you know, you deserve just uh, ease. It says, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because the adversary of the devil walketh about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's ready. He's not hiding. He's roaring. And that's why we got to stay awake. That's why we've got to uh, be aware and make sure that we are heeding the warnings. But it is all too easy at times to ignore the warning and continue on our way, isn't it? You just kind of, oh, it's not a tornado. They're just blowing out of proportion. You know, in our lives, it's kind of like, oh, we just kind of, oh, I'm okay. I'm making it. You know, I have my morning two-minute prayer before I eat and maybe a Bible verse because, you know, I've got to fit God in my life. So, you know, I've got to make sure that I have this to, to stay a good Christian. So, you know, I have those moments. And, you know, make sure I turn on some Christian music and praise him because he deserves it. You know, we have these, but the warning signs are, is we got to stay awake. We got to make sure this is our life. And not taking, not eating this bread as something that's just an extra. Taking this as your whole meal for your life. Taking this so your life has the power to overcome the flesh, overcome the temptations, and overcome the devil. That's where you're going to get the energy and the power to do that. Because you're God's child. You have the power to overcome the world. Amen? You have the power to overcome sin. But if, we're, if our only nutrition value comes from a couple minutes and of meditating on God's word, and we just kind of go about life our normal hunky-dory way, then, you know, we're going to be defeated in our minds, aren't we? We're going to be defeated as we, we're just kind of be discouraged because things aren't going the way I want them to go, because the storm's in this, you know, I wish things would just get back to normal, and, and I just wish I could just go to the mall and shop at every store and touch everything and touch my face. You know, all these things so restrictive. And you you find yourself wrapped up in this cloud of complaining, don't we? But the thing is, is we got to keep our minds and our eyes and our mouth speaking the truth. The only way we do that is by a constant flow. Because your mind is the battlefield. Your mind is the battlefield. Heed the warnings. Number three, pre- be prepared. Ephesians 5, 15 and 17 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And something that really stuck out, and I've talked to you about, uh, see that you walk circumspectly, take a a uh, microscope to your life and see if everything lines up with God's word. And if it doesn't, then you need to change some things. And it says, redeeming the time. Make the most of your time because the days are evil. Don't tell other people and complain to other people that things are awful. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> everybody, everybody knows it's, the days are evil, right? So what should we do? Redeem the time. Well, how do you redeem time? Love God and love others. Well, how do you love others? Well, you give people a call, you know, drop off stuff at the doorstep or, you know, do something. Lord, what can I do to bless somebody else? I want to redeem the time. And then the last part was, wherefore, be not unwise, but. So if you don't want to be unwise, understand what the will of the Lord is. Understand what the will of the Lord is. So what is the will of the Lord? It doesn't mean that you have to know exactly your whole life plan. It just means what is the plan for today? What's the plan for this decision right now? Be not unwise, but understand what the will is in everything that you face in your day. And so be prepared. Number four, know where to find refuge. 
Psalm 46, 1 and 2 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea? So know where to find refuge. When facing a storm, we instinctively know where to, to find shelter, don't we? If it's raining, or if it's windy for me, because my hair is about ready to reach the ceiling. If it's windy, and I'm trying to find shelter to keep it in place. Or if, you know, it's pouring down rain, I just don't walk out with my Walmart bags and my mask and just be like, yeah, I'm glad I'm getting soaked right now because I love walking in wet socks. I just, no, I, I really don't. But, you know, in that idea, hey, where do you find refuge? We naturally look for a place to hide when the boogie monster's after us. You know, I have kids, so, you know, I kind of have to go there. But, you know, we, fought, we know where to hide when things go bad because we understand God is our refuge. Man, he is so good. When things go bad, when things are going bad in your life, where do you run to? Do you run to the word of God and say, I'm just going to start, and I'm just going to start reading until God just illuminates something that I need to hear? Or you turn on praise music, and you're just like, I'm just going to praise until I'm down on my knees worshiping him. You know, where do you turn when storms come? Where's your refuge some people turn to drinking. Some people turn to, uh, I don't know, a lot of craziness out there. A lot of people turn to a lot of things to satisfy that refuge, and it don't. It just makes it worse. When God's our refuge, we actually get a better perspective on our situation. We look at it so differently. Number five, God is in control. <laughs> Remember this. God is in control. Psalm 29, 10, 11 say, The Lord sitteth upon the flood. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. Amen? The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Did you get that? The Lord will give strength to his people. And the Lord will bless his people with peace. God is in control. The question is, are you leaning on him? Are you running to him for shelter? Because he should be your shelter in this time of storm. God is still all-powerful. He's over every trouble we face. He's with us in each trial. So remember, God is in control. Number six, <laughs> have you ever, we win in the end. Have you ever watched, if somebody watched a movie and you really wanted to see it, my son's really bad at telling me. He's actually getting better. But I was like, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear anything about the movie, I want to watch it. And then you're, and you're sitting there watching it with that person and they're over there quoting something that's getting ready to happen. It's like, no, don't. But here's the thing, in life, God doesn't do that to you. What God does, he says, you win. You win. You win in the end. And you have the power to win every battle that you face. And here's how. Right here in his word. Isn't that awesome? Has anybody faced discouragement in the last few, few months? Maybe possibly depression? Possibly just uh, going out of your mind? What's going to happen? Remember this. We win. We'll win over this. Whatever that looks like, I trust God with that. Remember, we win. Even facing a huge loss and ravaging storms, we win in the end. Even in this time of storm, hard times do not hold the final say in our lives. Believers, we are kept safe in the hands of our Creator. In this life and in the next, winds will blow, devastating loss may come, but God is our Redeemer. He's our friend. He's the only one who can take what seems to be utter destruction and somehow turn around and make it look good. Make it turn out good. Remember that verse, Romans 8, 28? All, not some, not a little, 
all things work together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. All things. And I don't know about you, but man, I am so thrown off in my mind and in my thoughts because remember at, at the beginning, actually there wasn't seven, there's six. I just want to end with this one. Remember that uh, God is in control of all of this. And in this storm, you will at times, maybe a lot, turn and look at the storm. But don't stare at it. <laughs> Who stares at their storm? I'm like double time on that. You got my attention, Carrie. What do you want? You know, and, and, and the thing is, Satan and your flesh and all of that are screaming at you like kids that want something. That's the only really kind of rational thing that I can think of that's really comparable to that. But, you know, you know in my life, it's kind of, I love it. Um, this, this is us. But, you know, it's... <laughs> um, but in that idea, you will want to be tempted to look at the storm, and you might look at the storm, but here's the thing. Don't stare at it. Get your eyes back on Jesus. Say, Lord, help me. He'll immediately, like he did with Peter, pull you right back up. So when the storm gets your attention, get it back to Jesus. Turn to him. Allow him. Run to him for shelter. Because he can be your shelter in the storm. And he'll have everything you'll need. He'll have, I don't know if he'll have McDonald's french fries and nuggets in the, in the shelter, which my idea would be like, no, it'd be more like fruit and veggies. But, you know, it's, it'd be what's best for you uh, in the end. But here's the thing. Trust God. Trust God. If I had anything to say and could wrap up this, this, this sermon this morning is the fact that do you trust God completely? Do you run to him in this storm? Because if you don't, today's the day to change that. Run to him. You can come to the altar in your seat. If you want to make decisions and online, if you're at home, make decisions today. Because today's the day that life can change for you. Because now you have somebody you can turn to. You remember from this truth that God says, I, can, I will be your shelter. Come to me. And you'll start practicing that in your life. So run to him. Run to the Father this morning. As the worship team comes up, we'll have time of invitation. I know we're in service and some of you are still online. But this is a time dedicated to make decisions. If the Spirit is moving in your heart, let's not go back the way things were when the Spirit's moving. We just kind of, uh, let's, let's be proactive when God's moving in our life. Make decisions this morning. Whatever the Holy Spirit's leading you to do. If you need Jesus, come to Jesus this morning. If you're like, I'm just in this storm and I have nowhere to turn, but I found out that God is my refuge and I'm going to run to him this morning. Let's do that. Slow down, take time, breathe in instead. The thoughts in his mind always higher than mine, and he will be all in the come. So take courage, my heart, and stay steadfast, my soul. He's in the waiting, he's in the waiting. Hold on to your your triumph unfolds. He's never failing. He's never failing. Sing.
Let's pray, Lord, just we thank you for the victory. We thank you that you have overcome the world. Lord, help us to claim victory in our life. We just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a few things I want to tell you before we dismiss. We, we have uh, an awesome opportunity of a media grant. Um, they are going to possibly pay up to 5000 toward media. Um, and so we applied for this grant, and we're waiting to hear back to see if we were approved. So we, we, will, possi- we will have to pay 10% of that grant, but we can get up to 5000 worth of stuff. So that will help us in our production of being online, help our sound, on all around be able to help with that. So be praying that, uh, that they decide that we'll be able to get that uh, grant. And so, and also make sure you, to keep updated, make sure you uh, go to our Facebook page. We do not have service tonight, and so, um, and so just, uh, just remember that. And if you have any questions, please call me, text me, um, and I'll get with you and let you know and answer your questions. Thanks a lot, and thank you for being in God's house this morning. We'll see you next time.